good evening our dear students uh, who are going to study the role of moderates in indian national congress as you are aware that indian national congress came into being in 1885 due to the efforts of the international and internationalists indian national congress was having uh, actually three phases the moderate phase extremist phase and garden phase the first phase which started in 1885 uh, continued till 1905 the group which was which, which worked during that period was known as a moderate a moderate group and their policies they were itself moderate policies at the time of the formation of the international congress it is creation was welcomed by the then uh, governor general lord dufferin lord dufferin actually made arrangements for its first session which was held in bombay in 1885 in 1887 uh, during this third session uh, the governor of madras actually made arrangements for the, for organizing that session but soon a difference is uh, emerged between the two groups between the uh, the british authorities which were working in india and international congress due to the due to the uh, due to the policies of the british which were actually exposed by the indian uh, nationalists known as the moderates the moderates were termed by the india indian uh, indian authorities or the british authorities who were working in india as seditious it was uh, called as a seditious body and uh, it is workers uh, uh, were known as the uh, microscopic minority and it is demands the demands of the international congress were termed as the uh, a big jump to an big jump into an unknown although that international congress uh, during its initial phase during the phase which was started by the moderates or the moderate phase itself it was not uh, it was not uh, against the british british rule it they did not want any independence from the british uh, authorities or british rule rather they were the sympathizers of the british british authority or british rule in india what they demanded from the british parliament or british authorities in india was basic rights for the indians the method which they utilized the for presenting or highlighting uh, their demands uh, while three p they they took recourse of uh, petitions uh, press and uh, prayers for presenting their demands or for highlighting their demands uh, in front of the british authorities or british parliament they uh, they 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 send the petitions to the british parliament or british authorities in india and these petitions contain the demands of the indian nationalists or india itself second important tool which they utilized for presenting their demands was the press they highlighted their demands through press and uh, and sent newspapers to british authorities uh, containing the demands of indian nationalists are in india third important thing was the prayers they organized prayers for for making their demands uh, public and uh, another important tool which they utilized other than these three p's was the constitutional agitation constitutional agitation was the main uh, tool which they utilized for highlighting their demands they were against the violence and they did not uh, did not go for any hartals or slogans rather they through peaceful means or they through uh, non violent means presented their demands in front of the british authorities in india the demands which were which were which were there which were presented by them or which were highlighted by them during their uh, 20 uh, year uh, tenure was aware reduction in the military expenditure re reduction in uh, overall expenditure of india and uh, uh, holding up uh, ics exam simultaneously in india and england uh, lowering the age of uh, the the entry level age of uh, ics Uh, establishment of the public service commission allowing indians to manufacture salt development of the industries uh, reduction into the into the into the 
excise and trade taxes, uh, inclusion of more Indians into the central legislative council or provincial legislative councils, more jobs to the Indians, development of education and other items. All these, uh, all these demands which, uh, which were there, uh, in, which were there uh, in the basket of uh, the moderates, they were highlighted by them through through different ways, through petitions, through prayers, through uh, these press or through constitutional agitation. And they demanded from the British Parliament that these demands uh, uh, need to be fulfilled within the embed of the British Parliament or within the embed of the British authority or constitution. And they did not uh, want any uh, complete independence or sort of any independence from the British government. What they demanded was the basic rights. The demands of these British, uh, of these uh, moderates were although were not accepted by the British Parliament, but they were having, these demands were having impact upon the British authorities in India. And uh, British authorities who were working in India at that time, uh, were initially they were not against the creation or working of the Indian National Congress and Dufferin, who was the Governor General of India at the formation of the Indian National Congress in 1885, um, uh, was actually uh, welcomed was actually uh, he uh, make arrangements for uh, holding the first session of the International Congress at Bombay and he welcomed its creation and similarly in 1887 uh, the governor of Madras he also uh, helped the organizer, organizers of the third session to uh, organize the session at Madras even arrangements were made with him but uh, soon when when uh, the policies of the British government were exposed by the Indian National Congress uh, during this moderate phase after 1887, um, the jealousy between the two started, the hostility between the two started and uh, these uh, British authorities in India, they, term, they began to term, they did begin to call Indian National Congress as a seditious body, a microscopic minority, or uh, their demands were called as a big jump into the unknown. Now, the demands which were presented by them or which were highlighted by them, were, were these demands, were these demands uh, accepted by the British authorities or British parliament? Majority of the demands were not accepted, but few of the demands were taken cognizance of, like, uh, like their demand for holding simultaneous examination in India and England was actually taken, uh, taken, taken uh, into cognizance by the British government and in 1893, a resolution which was actually drafted by the International Congress, by the moderates, was presented into the British Parliament and British Parliament was having a look upon it. Mm. And later, uh, the simultaneous examination was, uh, was th that demand was fulfilled by the British Parliament during the extremist phase, not during the moderate phase, but during the extremist phase. Another demand, demand which was uh, which was that of the reduction into the military and expen overall expenditure of India uh, was uh, for that for uh, for for calculating the expenditure, a uh, Velvai Commission was uh, appointed by the British Parliament in eighteen hundred and ninety five, uh, and the expenditure which happened in it data was framed for that uh, of that expenditure in India. Uh, another important demand which was. Uh, partially fulfilled by the British government uh, which was taken by the moderates in front of the British government and partially it was filled, uh, fulfilled by the British parliament was the enlargement of the Indian councils in 1892. The central legislative councils and the provincial legislative councils were enlarged and uh, Indians were, more Indians were included in it, not more than 20 members but Indians were included in it. They were given the right to discuss the budget, but they were not given the right to cast their vote in favor or against that uh, budget. So let me tell you that uh, the majority of the demands of the Indian National Congress were not accepted uh, uh, by the British Parliament, but they were they were British Parliament actually go through the demands or go through the petitions or go through the drafts which were sent by the moderates uh, to the British Parliament uh, are the authorities who were working in India. They also go through the demands of the moderates. They, they actually have a look upon these demands 
although they were not fulfilled during the moderate phase, but later on they were fulfilled during the extremist phase. The biggest achievement of the International Congress was uh, International Arma, uh, International Congress during its earlier phase or uh, during the moderate phase was uh, that as seed was sown, seed of nationalism, seed of national consciousness was sown by these moderates. Uh, unity, oneness, national concept, concept of a nation, it was sown by the, by the moderate group. Moderates actually uh, brought, uh, brought consciousness among the Indians for, for equality, for freedom, for their rights and these rights, the, that consciousness, that political consciousness later on, uh, later on uh, actually became a base, a ladder for the, for the groups which actually uh, followed that moderate group like extremists or Gandhian phase. So, uh, we cannot call the moderates to a total failure. Moderates were having their own limitations. Uh, maybe the one of the limitations was that if the moderates during its initial phase, uh, during, the, during, the, during its creation, demanded directly independence, the British might have wiped it out. That is why they, they actually, uh, they actually uh, utilized their own uh, tactics of um, highlighting the main demands like moderate demands like the basic rights to be accorded to the Indians or to be given to the Indians and the basic demands were the jobs, basic demands were the development of education, basic demands were the reduction in expenditure, basic demands were the ICS, more inclusion of Indians into the, into the, into the Indian administrative services, development of industries, crafts and arts. So these were the demands which they highlighted. Uh, deliberate. It was their deliberate attempt to uh, to highlight these basic demands and not uh, to go for the complete independence from the British government. And uh, let me tell you that India was not ready actually at that time for the complete independence. So we cannot call them uh, the, uh, the total failure, uh, uh, but we can uh, we can we can hear, uh, use a term that they actually. Uh, emerged out to be successful in, uh, in sowing a seed of uh, national consciousness, political consciousness in India. So this, is, this was actually the moderate phase which started in 1885 and they worked it in 1905 and uh, in 1905 another important group which, which followed them or which uh, overcame that moderate phase was the extremist phase. Tomorrow we will study that extremist phase as well and its working. Uh, goodbye.